You hear that squirrel chirping away. That's what clinging is. It gets one idea in its head and it just repeats it over and over and over again. It's the same way that we cling to things. We have certain ideas the way things should be done, certain ideas about where pleasure should be found and how we should find it. And we just keep repeating them over and over and over again. Just something jolts us out of it, and then we like grab onto something else. That's the mind's basic way of operating. It's afraid that if it didn't have something going through its head all the time, it would just disappear. So we fill up our minds with garbage, anything that we can find. To make another comparison with the animals around here, I notice in the times of the year when there's no fruit on the trees, the food is scarce. You look at the coyote scat, and it has plastic rope and all kinds of things. Just to, it's a sign that they've just been stuffing things into their mouths just to have something inside. Of course, plastic rope is not good for you if you swallow it. It's the same with a lot of our ways of clinging. We cling to things we think they're going to give us some happiness, give us some pleasure, or at the very least keep us in, in business. Yet they can do us a lot of harm. So the Buddha gives us something good to cling to. This is why we practice concentration. If you try to gain insight without concentration, it just makes you more disoriented. But if you do it on a basis of concentration, a sense of well-being, a sense of stability, then you can look at your other clingings and see that they really are harmful. So learn to develop a taste for the pleasure of concentration, a taste for the ease and well-being that come when you just let the mind be with one object that's a skillful object, a useful object, one that really is conducive to a sense of pleasure, a sense of fullness or refreshment. If you're going to cling to something, cling to that. And try to maintain it as you go through the day. This is one thing where repeating something again and again and again is actually good for you. After all, we have that habit, so the Buddha teaches us to use that habit in a useful way. Ultimately, of course, we'll find that there comes a place where we can let go even of that. But first, to make sure you don't go back to cling to your old unskillful habits. Hold on to this one. The habit of staying with the breath, getting to be familiar with the breath, living in the breath and the body. So the well-being that comes from repeating things actually is good for the mind. It helps lead to insight. The little squirrel doesn't gain any insight. It just keeps repeating, repeating, doesn't seem. Stop to check as he's actually accomplishing anything. But this is what makes us human beings, is the ability to reflect. And to see where we're doing something unskillful and to realize we have skillful alternatives. And we choose the skillful alternative. We have that freedom of choice, so take advantage of it. 